Hello my writerly friends, I am Victoria, author and editor, and I am here today to tell you about one of my favorite things in the world, and that is Scrivener. I have been using Scrivener for about 10 years, and it completely changed the way that I write, um, especially books, but it is also fantastic for blog posts, stories, um, academic writing. Organizing your research and notes in Scrivener is so much simpler. So the latest major update to Scrivener is Scrivener 3. It is a major update, which means that it is paid. Um, for new users, Scrivener is $45, and for current users, it's $25 for the update. The update, um, as of now, February 2019, is only available for Mac but it will be available for Windows soon. I believe there may actually be a beta available for Windows at the moment, but Windows users who purchase Scrivener now will receive the update for free when it comes out. As I said, I love Scrivener. I take every opportunity to talk about it, to tell people about it, because honestly, I could not imagine writing a book without Scrivener. So I have a ton of blog posts and videos about it. Um, I am linking in the description box to a page on my website called Scrivener Central. That is where you will find links to all of my posts about Scrivener, reviews, tips, etc. Um, there are also links on that page to buy Scrivener. They are affiliate links, so I get a little cut, but whether you use those links or not, you should definitely try it out because I promise you will not be disappointed. Okay, with that said, let's talk about Scrivener 3. I'm going to tell you about some of the things that are new in Scrivener 3, specifically the features and tools that I utilize the most. I am currently using Scrivener for fiction writing, so that is what this is geared toward, but these tools are so versatile and useful, you can use them for a ton of different kinds of projects. And that is pretty representative of the entire program. If you have not used Scrivener, one of the great things about it is how flexible and versatile it is. Um, I use Scrivener differently for each manuscript that I write. You can set up your projects a little bit differently, utilize different tools, and really uh, use the program to fit the, the project that you're working on. Okay, here are my favorite features of Scrivener 3. So this is Scrivener 3. Um, if you are familiar with Scrivener, you'll notice that the, um, the appearance is a little bit different. Um, it's very sleek, very simple, and I love it because it's, uh, it, it doesn't distract from the writing process, which is one of the main goals of any writing software. So um, along with this new appearance, we also have more options. Um, for customizing the appearance. This is something I don't use a ton, but I know a lot of people really appreciate um, the option to go entirely dark mode. Um, we've had this option in, um, in the composition mode previously, but now as you can see you can take the entire, um, the entire thing into dark mode. Um, you can either keep the main editors light or allow them to go dark as well. Um, and we have options for the appearance of both the dark and the light mode. So I'm just going to run through those really quickly so you can see what they look like. Um, you saw the default. And then in dark mode, we have a Midsummer's Night. Purple Haze, which is a light theme. Solarized Dark, and Solarized Light. So plenty of options here, and I love this because, um, first of all, you can choose the appearance that's easiest on your eyes, um, but it's also great that you can switch up the way um, everything looks because sometimes when we're stuck in a rut, um, just, just changing the way things look can kind of jar us out of it, or it can for me. Of course, composition mode is still um, basically the same. 
can do light or dark. And uh, we also have a pretty cool feature now where you can focus on a specific line, sentence, or paragraph, uh, the one that you're working on. So, <laughs> there we go. It, it kind of blocks everything else out so you can, again, just focus on what you're doing. And this is perfect for the drafting stage when we're trying to turn off that self-editor and really just get the words down. Okay, the next feature that I want to look at is my absolute favorite. Um, it is something that I've wanted for a really long time, and I am so happy that Scrivener has integrated this into the system. Uh, you can now separate your index cards by labels. So you can separate them using um, colored threads. Here we go. Okay, so you see here um, that my index cards, each of which represents a, uh, a chapter, are separated into two colored threads. The green is a present timeline and the blue is a past timeline. So this story utilizes dual timelines um, and I kind of alternate between them and then they converge in the end. Um, you can also use this for dual points of view and obviously I have two threads here you can have as many as you need so this is so so easy to use you just set the label to whatever you want and of course these are customizable so you can um, change the labels add as many as you need you can change it this way or true to Scrivener style you can just drag and drop it's so easy. Honestly, it doesn't get any easier than that. And I love this because um, on my physical cork board that I have in my office, this is pretty much how I set things up uh, when I'm plotting or replotting, as the case may be. Um, this is how I'm organizing my little scraps of paper and trying to visualize the story and make sure everything is balanced. So I absolutely love that Scrivener has taken something that is um, intuitive and effective and integrated it into the, the digital system. Um, along with this, obviously I have it horizontal. You can also view it vertically. And if you have a monitor that you can um, turn vertically, I, I bet this would be really cool. Um, and you can also, obviously you have plenty of options here. Uh, you can also turn this off and just view them like you would normally. So if you if you need um, a different look, then that's there for you. This is without a doubt my favorite feature in Scrivener 3. Honestly, I think it's worth upgrading just for this, but uh, this is probably very specific to the way that I use Scrivener. So I'm curious to hear whether you all are as excited about this feature as I am. Um, next up, we are going to check out another very cool feature. I'm gonna go into some words here so we can see it in action. Um, this feature is called Linguistic Focus. If you have ever wished that you could really zoom in on your dialogue and uh, check for consistency, this is the perfect feature for you. So all you do is pull up Linguistic Focus and click Direct Speech, and now you can see just dialogue. You can just read through your dialogue, you can read it out loud, uh, and really get a feel for whether your character's voices are consistent, uh, whether your dialogue feels organic. And of course we can adjust the fade here. So you can go all the way from no fade to everything being completely blocked out. So I really love this feature and I think this is another one that a lot of us have wished for. Um, and what I really love about the linguistic focus feature is that they could have stopped here. This is already awesome, but 
as you can see, we have a lot more options. Um, you can check just your nouns, just your pronouns. Uh, this one probably gets a lot of use, just adverbs. So uh, this is a great way to check yourself and really zero in on some possible issues, um, bad habits you may have. This is perfect for the self-editing stage when um, we're trying to clean things up and try to get a new perspective on the work. Um, this is really kind of forcing some distance from the work and forcing us to check and make sure that we're not falling into traps when it comes to our pros. So again, this is a really cool feature um, and honestly, it, it's not something that you need per se to write, but it's just something that's going to help you take your writing to the next level. All right, if you have been using Scrivener for any amount of time, you have probably drilled into your muscle memory the shift command T shortcut, which pulls up the writing targets. Um, of course, we have the target for the entire manuscript, which shows our current word count and our target word count. And then we have the session target, again, with what we've written and our goal. This is great. I'm not going to stop using this, I'm sure. Um, it's become so much of a habit at this point. It is really nice to see your work, um, your word count increasing as you, as you work on the project. But in Scrivener 3, we can actually see those two progress bars right here um, in the toolbar. So the upper progress bar shows the total progress on the manuscript. And the lower bar down here shows the, the session progress. So that is always there. You can just glance up and see where you are as far as your word count. If you hover over it, then you see the, um, the exact numbers. So that's pretty cool. Maybe it will stop me from pulling up project targets quite as much. Maybe. Only time will tell. Right here in the same area, if you click on your toolbar, you pull up the quick search. So um, search for something and you're going to see all the hits in your entire project. Um, the cool thing about this is down here in the text, it actually shows context for it. So if you are looking for something and you can kind of remember what was around it, but you don't remember what scene or even what chapter it was in. Um, this can be a really quick, easy way to find it. Um, and of course, you can pull up pull up the full project search um, and see everything over here in the sidebar. But again, if you don't remember exactly where it was, it can take a while to get through all of these scenes and find what you're looking for. So the quick search can be very useful for that. All right, the next thing they have updated is the compile. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. You can see it is a lot simpler. They've really made it a lot easier to get the basic format that you're looking for. So uh, again, if you've used Scrivener before, then you are used to seeing a ton of options here. Just so many options and you have to pretty much click through all of them to get it set up the way you want. Now you choose your export format. So I'm going to stick with Microsoft Word here. And then you come over here on the left and you have a bunch of project formats, just uh, preset formats that you can select from and it's gonna change it up pretty dramatically. So you can see what we're looking at here, proof copy. Plenty of options, it's very easy. And of course, if you want to make uh, more specific changes, you can go into the settings and make any of those changes that you need to. And for those who have been using Scrivener 2 um, and you have your settings just the way you want them and you don't want to do it again, you can actually import 
your settings from Scrivener 2. I was very happy about this because I took some time and really went through and had the settings exactly how I wanted them. So I was happy that I did not have to do all that again, especially in an unfamiliar system. There are also some updates for folks compiling for EPUB and Kindle. So this is the new compile system. The last thing I want to talk about is for all the multitaskers in the room. Um, of course, you know that we can split screens and see multiple things at once. But now, for when that is not enough, we have a feature called copy holders. So all you have to do is click on what you want to open, click open in copy holder, and there it is. So for those in the back, we now have three separate files open in the main editor, but we can open in copy holder and we have four, four files right there. So for those moments when you need to be looking at two scenes, research and character background, you can have it all right there in the main editor. And of course, if you need even more, then you can open as a quick reference. So the sky is the limit at this point. You may need an extra screen to hold all of this. And again, this is just an example of Scrivener being so flexible and accommodating a lot of different um, styles for, for writing for productivity. So that's it. Those are my favorite features in Scrivener 3. All right, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this helpful. If you were considering Scrivener or the update but weren't sure whether to pull the trigger, I hope this video helped you determine whether it's going to be a good fit for you. And remember, you can test drive either Scrivener or the update. Uh, you get free trial for 30 days. So if you're not sure still, you should definitely check it out for that 30 days and see how it's going to do. If you have any questions about Scrivener, you are more than welcome to contact me. Uh, leave a comment down below and I will definitely respond. I love talking Scrivener, if you can't tell. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Alright, that's it for today. I'll see y'all next time.